Creo 4.0, Lesson 7, Part 1. In this lesson, we're going to model the workpiece of a part. This is the swivel, or I'm sorry, the clamp arm. The swivel will go into it on one side when we create the assembly. So basically, we're going to make a casting, and then as we model, we are going to remove material and make a machine part. Later, we'll divide this into a family table, which we can display either model, but it's the same database, same part. <clears throat> so you can do your typical setting up your materials, setting up your config file, everything that you normally do, just follow the steps in the book. We're going to start off. It's a arm part, clamp arm, and I do want to make sure everything is turned on, so I will do that. And we're going to start off, we're going to sketch on the front datum plane, extrude, right mouse button, or it should come up automatically if I didn't move my cursor, circle, and this is going to be two inches in diameter. And it's going to be 1.75 in height. There's our first feature. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to copy that feature. And then we're going to paste special. This is very important here. We want to make it independent and we want to move and rotate or rotate it. And click OK. It's going to put a bounding box on it. And I'm going to zoom out a little bit and move my first feature over. So I want to look at my transformation. It's looking for a direction reference. So we are right mouse button move. We're going to leave it like move, not rotate. And it wants a reference. So we're going to use the datum plane, the right datum plane, as the reference. And we're going to drag it five inches. You can type it, obviously, and you can type it up here, and you can type it here. Or drag it. So four methods. Middle mouse button. Now, if I go in here and I right mouse button ask for the dimensions, it's only going to give me the distance in between. I'm going to unselect, deselect the items, and double click over here. Now, this side is 0.875 high in height and 1.5 in diameter. So, 1.5, and my dimension here is 0.75. Uh, I think I did that wrong already. Point eight seven five. And click my left mouse on a couple times. So I've got my first two features completed. Next I'm going to go and I'm going to create a web in between them. And before I do that, I want to have a datum plane. So I can select this datum plane to start because I'm going to offset it. Click the datum plane. And I'm going to offset it 0.4375. Could have done that up here to also. Click OK. With it still selected, I'm going to pick extrude and I'm going to go into my sketch view. And I think I'll turn off all of these so you can see it a little bit easier. And in fact, we will go to no hidden. Right mouse button, I'm going to pick up my references. And I want to use the two circles as references. So my first, I can use a circle for my sketch 
Or in this case, I'm going to use center and ends. I'm going to pick here. And I'm going to go beyond it, not up here, not over here. I'm going to go beyond it over here and come around and put an arc in there. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Do it again. Center and come over here, not here. Over here and go around. So those are my two arcs. Now I want to connect those two arcs. with a line. I'm going to go into full screen. And I'm going to be a little careful over here because I want it to end up being tangent. So on this side, the tangency is really going to be over here. And on this side, the tangency is going to be on this side. So I'm going to just come in here and select this right about there, not here. And I'm going to go over and I'm going to pick now it wants to snap. I don't want it to snap. There we go. So you can see it has a tangency. And this one looks like it does not have a tangency. So what I want to do before I go on, I want to make sure this is tangent. So I'm going to pick my tangent constraint. Select here and select my reference circle. And now that's tangent. Now I'll go back and make another line on the bottom, do the same method. Let's try coming over here first. Remember, not here. And to the tangent point here. And again, you can see that did become tangent. This side, for some reason, did not pick up the tangency. So I'm going to pick up tangent and click here and here. Now, that's the old method. There actually is a tangent command. I think I do it in the book where you can select the line that you're going to use here and use line tangent. But I wanted to show you how you work with this to make it what you want. Now, this has got to be a closed section, and we've got a lot of extra little material in here. So I'm going to delete the segment. And over here, I'm going to delete the segment. But it's still, I hit my middle mouse, it still does not shade it in. And if I go to my feature requirements, there's still a problem. The problem is if I look very closely, there's actually a little tiny piece of a line here or an arc. So I'm going to delete that one. And on the other side, delete that one middle mouse button and zoom in a little bit and you can see it shades. There are no dimensions. You got a dimension, you didn't do it correctly. And again, you can do this a little bit easier if you go line tangent and it makes the tangency without trying to eyeball it. But you do need to learn to do both methods. So check this. And I'll go into my shading with edges. And we're going to have a symmetrical rib, or I should call it a, a web. And I think it's 0.75. We will check that. That looks way too thick. 0.5. And I'll go back up to the top and check it for the dimension. So. 0.375, so I'm still off, like so. Middle mouse button, finish it. And I'm going to turn back on my <coughs> reference features here in the datum plane. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, I want to put a rib in here. It's a different command. So I'm going to come up and select rib, but profile rib, not trajectory. And I'm going to select the datum plane here to sketch on. Go into 2D. And I'm going to turn this. So section orientation, I'm going to go select my <coughs> vertical reference so that it turns it. Makes it a little easier to see. Now, as far as my references go, 
I need this, this, and this as a reference. You want to turn off your shading, you can do that. Close. And I'm going to just put one line in here, not three, just one. So I'm going to come in here, be careful not to pick the top, not to get down here. Pick once, pick twice, middle mouse button, middle mouse button. <clears throat> and you get three dimensions. Now, one of the dimensions is 0.15, so we're going to change that one first. Now, the reason for that is when I add the next dimension, it will leave that dimension there alone. I don't want an angle. I want from here up. And that one is supposed to be 0.9875, like so. Check. Now, kind of surprises people sometimes. Say, well, what's going on? You have to flip the arrow sometimes in order to get the preview. We'll go back over to our shading. Flip the arrow. And this is going to be 0.375. Like so. Now, <clears throat> before we put on the rounds, what I want to do is I want to see this dimension here is D10. And this dimension here is D8. So I'm going to create a relation. So D10 equals D8. I can test it. And OK. So now if you go to try to change a dimension, for instance, this one here, it won't let you because it'll say that that dimension is, I'll go back over to my model, repaint. It'll say you cannot change it. Dimension is driven by a relation. So these two will always remain the same size. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to have rounds. So one way we can do this, we want it to be a casting. So we can say auto round. And it's supposed to be 0 0.04. And check. And it'll run the auto player. And it'll round everything. Now, sometimes this will slow down your system. And you can always suppress that round while you're doing other work. So let's see if there's anything else we want to accomplish in this first casting piece. Now, you're going to save this as the casting. Follow the steps in the book. And then when we continue on, we will add cuts to it. So we're at that point. You can save it, and then later we'll make a family table with this and the version with the cuts on it.